Welcome, I'm so glad you're here for our third wellness webinar. This one is on the benefits of acupuncture, so let's dive right in. Traditional Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine is a holistic healthcare practice dating back more than 2,000 years. The practice takes a natural healing approach by stimulating your body's own healing abilities with attention on your body and how it relates to your mind and spirit. According to the University of Maryland Medical Center, traditional Chinese medicine aims to balance your, the patient's body through work on their external environment, emotions, and lifestyle factors, including diet and exercise. Here are some of the balancing therapies practiced in traditional Chinese medicine. Acupuncture. Acupuncture is the use of small needles inserted through your skin using specific patterns to stimulate different parts of your body. Cupping therapy. Cupping therapy is the use of heated glass cups applied to your skin that create suction to stimulate the flow of energy, the flow of blood, and to release adhesions or tissues that are stuck together. Herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is the use of healing medicinal plants. Nutrition. Eating based on what your body needs versus what it craves. Exercise. The use of lower intensity flow movements like Qigong. And massage, which is soft tissue manipulation. Traditional Chinese therapies. Dr. Wheel, a physician and author deeply embedded in alternative care practices, describes the objective of traditional Chinese medicine best. Traditional Chinese medicine encompasses how the human body interacts with all aspects of life and its environment, including the seasons, weather, time of day, diet, and emotional states. It seems the key to health as the harmonious and balanced functioning of the body, mind, and spirit, and holds that the balance of health depends on the unobstructed flow of qi or life energy through your body along pathways known as meridians or channels. Traditional Chinese medicine practitioners see disease as a result of disruptions in the circulation of this qi. There are many different treatment therapies practiced by Chinese medicine to achieve this balance described by Dr. Wheel. Let's take a look at some of them. On your first visit to an acupuncturist, there will most likely be a consultation. During this visit, your practitioner will want to get a thorough understanding of your pain, discomfort, and any other concerns to develop the best plan of action for your treatment. This typically involves a casual conversation about your general health, including eating and sleeping habits, medical history, emotional well-being, as well as information about menstrual cycles and past pregnancies whenever relevant. Some of the questions being asked may not seem relevant to your current concern, but this is intentional. Rather than just treating your symptoms, traditional Chinese medicine examines your overall health, and the information you provide will help your practitioner create a holistic picture of your health to create a comprehensive treatment plan just for you. Your consultation may also include an assessment, so let's go over that as well. Once you've had a chance to make introductions, including a discussion surrounding some of your medical history and your current health concerns, your practitioner will take some time to do an assessment. This involves checking your pulse, maybe a look at your tongue for color and coating, and in some cases, a quick physical examination if your concerns warrant one. Once assessed, your practitioner can better recommend your personalized treatment to address your concerns. This treatment may also include some dietary or lifestyle changes, as well as some other Chinese medicine therapies, in addition to the acupuncture treatment. For this initial appointment, as well as all acupuncture-related treatments, try to wear loose-fitting clothing that allows for movement and access to your up upper arms, back, lower legs, and abdomen. Don't arrive with a full stomach, that can make it hard to relax, but also do not have an empty stomach as this could cause some post-acupuncture lightheadedness. And be sure to tell your practitioner if it's your first time receiving acupuncture so that they can tailor the appointment to your first time needs. 
You can expect your consultation to last anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour and a half, so come prepared for that. It is also a good idea to gather any information you might want to share, such as the date of your last menstrual cycle if your concern is cycle related, or maybe there's a list of common foods in your diet if your concern is related to allergies or digestion. Another good tip is to make sure you do not schedule any strenuous activity prior to or after acupuncture. You want to enter into your session as calm as possible and afterward, you want to maintain the relaxed state achieved through your session. Acupuncture appointments following the consultation will be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and depending on the health concern, it may be recommended that you complete a series of treatments for the best results. I will often recommend that people will come once a week for four to six weeks initially so that we build a foundation with acupuncture. After that, if they require further treatments, they might be once a month. What to expect? So the thought of being poked with needles keeps many people away from acupuncture or creates anxiety for those with upcoming appointments. But rest assured, receiving acupuncture is fairly painless. Some people claim that they feel a little tinge of pain or electricity that subsides quickly once the needle is in, while others claim to feel nothing at all. To start your acupuncture session, your practitioner will typically meet with you first to discuss how you're feeling and to take your pulse. They will then decide the best course of treatment. You may be asked to remove all or partial clothing and to get comfortable on top of a massage type table. The practitioner will leave the room for this. The needles used in acupuncture are one time use and your practitioner will open each packet as they set the needles into your skin. This ensures that the needles are sterile. Once the needles are placed, you may be left alone to relax, sometimes with quiet, relaxing music. Your practitioner may come in at some point to check on you or to adjust the needles already in place. Your only job is to relax and let the needles do their work. So what to expect after a treatment? In general, most people feel relaxed or energized after an acupuncture treatment. With a pain type of condition, people often tell me that they feel better. That improvement often doesn't, doesn't last. Uh, people will often find that it lasts for maybe a few hours to a day after the first treatment. After subsequent treatments, people will find that the improvement lasts longer and longer. So that's why we typically will do a series of treatments to get sustainable long-term benefits. The days following, uh, acupuncture might mean better sleep, digestion, and an overall sense of well-being. But some patients report having a deeper, more intense effect in the days after a session. This is because acupuncture can sometimes bring to the surface some things that have been accumulating in your system. This is a good thing because we're trying to get rid of those things. Here are a few rare initial reactions to treatment. Fatigue. Acupuncture can bring on intense tiredness after a treatment or in the days after that. Emotional discharge. Acupuncture can cause increased expression of emotion both during and after the treatment. Intensified symptoms. Acupuncture can cause symptoms to become more intense at first. Due to this intensity of some of the reactions, sometimes people feel unsure about whether they should continue acupuncture treatment but the effects are beneficial and they are a necessary part of the process. Here's why. The sometimes intense symptoms following acupuncture treatments are part of the balancing process, whether it feels like that or not. Here's what's happening when you're experiencing these symptoms. Fatigue. The fatigue that sometimes follows an acupuncture treatment can feel like an undeserved hangover but sleep is how your body heals, and the fatigue you're feeling is your body's signal to slow down and let it do its work. Emotional discharge. Acupuncture works to harmonize your body. In the process, it can sometimes reveal our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual sensitivities. However, that, however that emotion rears its head, it is important to accept it rather than trying to push it back down. You're embarking on a journey to balance, and emotions are part of that journey. Intensified symptoms. Acupuncture stimulates your body to help it heal faster. As a result, it can intensify your symptoms as your body is working through it. 
The increased intensity means that your body is trying to heal. The Chinese organs are the focus of most traditional Chinese medicine treatments. These are different from the Western medicine organs, although they have the same name, which makes it quite confusing. Uh, the Chinese medicine organs are called the kidneys, the heart, spleen, liver, lung, gallbladder, small intestine, and large intestine. In Chinese medicine, organs were defined more by specific functions or symptoms rather than a specific physical organ. So this is why it becomes confusing that in Chinese medicine, for example, the kidneys are responsible for the lower legs, the back, the spine, nourishing the head and the brain. Uh, where kidneys in Western medicine don't have anything to do with any of those things. They're mainly just a filter for urine, blood and urine. So when we mention that the, your kidneys are weak, it does not mean that your Western medicine kidneys are weak. Uh, they're functioning just fine. But from a Chinese medicine standpoint, if you had a, a weak back, maybe you were having some headaches, feeling faint or lightheaded, it might mean that your kidneys weren't functioning properly in Chinese medicine. And we would do acupuncture to support your kidneys. Uh, the most common targeted treatments in Chinese medicine are for the following concerns. Chronic pain, arthritis, fatigue, infertility, liver disease, headaches, indigestion, hormone imbalances, high blood pressure, PMS or menopause symptoms, cancer recovery or chemotherapy. Uh, there has been some recent research showing that acupuncture is highly effective for relieving cancer-related pain. So maybe you're wondering just how acupuncture works. Well, stay with me for a moment. Before receiving acupuncture, it's a good idea first to know how the treatment works to get the most benefit from the treatment. Knowing means understanding your body's qi. In Chinese medicine, qi is generally translated to mean vital energy. It refers to the energy that runs through the meridians or channels in your body. If there is a pain, discomfort, or disease in your body, it is believed that the qi is blocked. When this occurs, your body is out of balance and more susceptible to pain and disease. From a Western medicine standpoint, research demonstrates that acupuncture helps with stimulating your brain to release endorphins and encephalins. Endorphins are natural mood elevators. Uh, people will often get a little burst of endorphins when they go for a run. Similar, you can get a burst of endorphins from acupuncture. Uh, and encephalins are natural painkillers. So we help to stimulate your body to release its own painkillers rather than being dependent on external painkillers. Uh, the other thing I find with acupuncture is that it seems to stimulate your body to direct it to an area where there's a problem that needs work. The purpose of acupuncture is to restore balance and get the qi flowing unobstructed through your body to recover your health and well-being. If you're still not sure if acupuncture is right for you, do you have any stress? Any tension in your neck or shoulders? One of the top concerns that people seek out acupuncture for is stress-related issues. This includes headaches, tight shoulders, eye strain, anxiety, and depression. And as many of us know, if untreated, the long-term effects of stress go beyond those tight shoulders and tension headaches that so many of us feel regularly. Acupuncturist Jeremy Reisenfeld of Transformational Acupuncture lists the effects of chronic stress as follows mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, and personality disorders, cardiovascular disease, including heart disease, high blood pressure, abnormal heart rhythms, heart attacks and stroke, obesity and other eating disorders, menstrual problems, sexual dysfunction such as impotence and premature ejaculation in men, and loss of sexual desire in both men and women, skin and hair problems such as acne, psoriasis, and eczema, and permanent hair loss, and gastrointestinal problems such as GERD, gastritis, ulcerative colitis, and irritable bowel. So how does ha acupuncture help with stress? I'm going to post a video in the comments uh, just to give you an idea of what to expect during an acupuncture session in terms of where the needles are positioned 
and also just demonstrating a few points that your acupuncturist might target to help manage the effects of stress. Your questions and feedback are always welcome. Feel free to fire away in the comments. Aside from stress, insomnia is another major concern for many acupuncture patients. And with countless over-the-counter and prescription sleep aids on the market, some habit-forming, acupuncture is a great alternative treatment for overcoming insomnia. The British Acupuncture Council states that the success of acupuncture for insomnia is possible. Rather than treating just insomnia with medication, acupuncture looks at a patient's sleeping and waking habits for a holistic look at what caused insomnia to create an in individualized treatment unique to, you, to the patient's needs. How do you handle your sleepless nights? Please post in the comments. What is electroacupuncture? In cases of chronic pain or when a practitioner finds an accumulation of chi, electroacupuncture may be employed to get the chi flowing. During an electroacupuncture treatment, needles are applied using the traditional method and then small clips are applied to two of the needles that run a light current between the selected needles to stimulate a larger area. Electroacupuncture might be used to treat chronic pain, acne, muscle spasms, injuries, and neurological disorders. Next, see electroacupuncture in action. I'm going to post a video again in the comments uh, just demonstrating how electroacupuncture is used by a practitioner on a patient to treat a swollen knee. This gives a whole new spin on your typical treatment for an injury that causes swelling. And acupuncture, facial acupuncture, uh, or cosmetic acupuncture. Uh, cosmetic acupuncture is where you insert several very small needles in the face. Uh, it's intended to uh, reduce wrinkles uh, and stimulate the production of collagen and elastin, which helps to support your skin, giving it the underlying structure, which helps to prevent sagging and wrinkling. So if you feel better now, what? One of the common misconceptions when it comes to acupuncture is that you should only go when you need a treatment for a specific health problem. But regular maintenance is a great way to ensure that you keep your chi flowing and your body and mind in good balance. TCM, the TCM Wellness Center for Acupuncture in Minneapolis likens acupuncture maintenance to that of a car. Once you've completed an initial or comprehensive acupuncture treatment plan, it is important to follow up with routine visits to maintain your newfound level of health. After all, if it was worth the, the investment to regain your health, then you owe it to yourself to maintain it. The key is to remain proactive and to stay one step ahead of potential problems before they have a chance to develop. It is far less costly to take your car to the mechanic for routine maintenance than it is to wait for a breakdown. Of course, with our bodies and minds, we don't have the option to do a trade-in when we break down. So, Maintenance is a wonderful proactive measure when it comes to your health and wellness. Many people find great benefit in using the balance of Western and Eastern medicines combined when they're seeking treatment. This is good when maybe a certain medication is required that has side effects that may cause pain or discomfort. Acupuncture really can be beneficial for helping to ease those pains or discomforts. The same goes when you're receiving acupuncture, but feel that you should maybe consult your primary doctor as well. The belief in Chinese medicine is that the patient should feel empowered by and good about the decisions they make for their health and wellness. So whatever that is for each individual is their specific choice. Finding your acupuncturist. So here is the great news. Uh, at Forces of Nature, we actually have five people who offer acupuncture treatment. So how to choose? Well, so the choices are that both of our chiropractors, Dr. Boan Bazit and Dr. Davey, both op offer chiropractic as well as acupuncture. Both of our naturopathic doctors, Dr. Rochelle Vong and myself, Dr. Pamela Frank, we offer acupuncture as part of our naturopathic treatment. And we have a dedicated acupuncturist, traditional Chinese medicine and craniosacral therapist Joy Walraven. So it may be that you want to incorporate 
uh, some acupuncture along with your treatment for back pain. So you want to see the chiropractor and do acupuncture as well. Uh, and maybe you want to devote entirely your energy just to acupuncture, in which case you might prefer to see joy. And you may want to address your lifestyle and diet and maybe supplementation uh, and do acupuncture, in which case maybe you want to see Dr. Vong or myself. The choice is up to you. It also sometimes depends for people on the way that they're in, their insurance coverage is structured. So you may have separate coverage for naturopaths and separate coverage for chiropractors and separate coverage for acupuncturists. And you may choose, you've used up your acupuncture coverage for the year, maybe you want to see a naturopath for acupuncture instead. Uh, so that also is something to take into consideration when you're deciding who to see. But your choices are that you may see our two chiropractors, Dr. Darlene Buan Bassett or Dr. Brandon Davey. You may see our two naturopaths, Dr. Rochelle Vong or myself, Dr. Pamela Frank. Or you may see our traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist and craniopsychotherapist, Joy Walraven. And thank you so much for attending this evening. Uh, I hope this experience has left you feeling ready to give acupuncture a try. Uh, if you still have some questions or concerns, by all means, please leave me a question in the comments. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions and help you out. Um, if you stick around for another minute or so, I have some other resources to share with you if you're interested in some reading. Um, I'll also post in the comments some of the resources that I use today to put together this, this presentation. Thank you so much for attending again. It means a lot to be able to share this experience with all of you. Now it's time to get started. Um, please reach out to me if you have any other questions or concerns. I'm more than happy to help. Take care and have a great evening.